Jo and today we will be learning about plants and habitats. Our key learning objectives are 1. To understand how different flora and fauna exists within ecosystems and food chains. 2. To recognise the typical parts of a plant and how they reproduce. And 3. To use flora and fauna as a springboard for creative ideas. An ecosystem describes a biological community of interacting flora and fauna and their physical environment. Do you know what flora and fauna is? Flora means plants and fauna means animals. Let's play a guessing game. Can you guess if I'm flora or fauna? Here's the first one. Yeah, you guessed it. I was a bee, so I was fauna. Here comes the next one. Yeah, I was flora. I was being a dandelion. Here's another one for you. Yeah, fauna. I was being an ant. Here's another one. Yeah, you guessed it. Flora, I was being a cactus. And the last one for you. Yeah, I was a sunflower, so I was Flora. Now why don't you have a go with your friends and see if you can play the guessing game, Flora or Fauna. An ecosystem and the living things within it depend on three things. Climate, soil and water. Now climate is the weather, so how hot it is, how cold it is, how much rain we have, how much sunshine we have. The soil type is really really important because it provides food for the plants and the animals and the water is another vital element to feed the plants and the animals. Now you could find an ecosystem in a tiny tiny little pond in your local park. And the food chain within that ecosystem might look a little bit like this. The green algae feeds the flies, the flies feed the fish, and the fish feed the birds. But human beings like us can play a really, really big part in disrupting the ecosystems and the food chains and pushing them a little bit off balance. So on your own in groups, I would like you to think of three things that human beings do that can push the ecosystems and the food chains off balance a little bit. Have a think and write them down. Here is your B vocal warm up. It's really important to warm up our voices when we're doing public speaking or singing. Imagine you have a bee in between your finger and thumb and the bee buzzes like this. <laughs> splat! And we splat our bee and it starts to shake and we go... Huh? Because it's gone missing. Huh? It flew in our mouth and we swallow it. And because we've swallowed a bee, we start to feel a bit sick. And that's your vocal warm up. Let's try it again, all the way through. <laughs> now we have to make sure that we look after all the creatures, all the flora, all the fauna, 
even down to the tiniest little bee, because they do a really, really big job. I love bees, and as Joe said, they're really important for our ecosystem. Should we learn more about why as we make our very own bee hat? You will need two pieces of A4 paper, preferably black and yellow, a pair of scissors, some tape or some glue, and a black pen. help plants to keep growing and giving us food. But how? Through pollination. But what is pollination? Flowers have parts called stamens. They make sticky pollen. Flowers also have a stigma that sits on top of a pistil, that sits on top of an ovule. The ovules are where seeds are made. Pollination is when pollen is moved from a plant's stamen to its stigma. It is very important because it helps make new seeds, which then grow into new plants. When bees go looking for sweet nectar inside of flowers, pollen gets stuck to them and moves from the stamen to the stigma. Then something magic happens and the seeds are made in the ovule. Imagine this tiny seed can then turn into another plant. And like magic, that plant will make new seeds and grow even more plants. Now let's use this flower to help us finish making our bee hat. Glue your yellow triangle to the headband you've made. Then, if you've got some spare paper, you can make eyes and glue them onto your bee. Glue on your antennae. And then, using your leftover bits of yellow paper, you can cut out circles and glue them on. So now you've got your very own bee hat made, you can be busy as a bee, buzzing around somewhere a little bit like this. Hi there! Thanks Ella for telling us all about the wonderful flowers. I learnt so many new words. Can you guess where I am today? Yes, I'm in the woods. I'm here to go on an adventure. Would you like to come with me? I want to see if I can find some habitats out here. Now I know that there are lots and lots of animals that live in the woods, but sometimes we can't see them. They might be so, so small, or maybe they sleep all day and they're awake at night time. Do you know what we call animals that do that? Yes, nocturnal animals. Are you ready to come on an adventure with me to see if we can find some habitats? Come on, let's go. Can you see this old log? I bet there's lots of animals that live inside it. A whole ecosystem in there. And can you see that hole on the ground? Do you think there might be a nocturnal animal living in there, asleep right now? And look at these really big trees. Which animals do you think? live right at the bottom of the tree. 
Which ones do you think live in the middle? And what animals do you think live right at the top? I've got so much information in here, Ella, and I just wish I had something to, to write it down in or something to log all of these things I've found in the woods today. Hmm. Well, I have collected lots of leaves, Jo, and I'm going to show you how to make your very own logbook to take on your adventures. A logbook is something that explorers would use to record all of the things they'd seen on their travels. All you will need is a piece of A4 paper, some scissors and a crayon. I decided to decorate my logbook. I glued a piece of raffia around it so I can tie it shut. You could use string or wool. I stuck some colour paper on to make the front and back covers and then I cut out some letters from an old magazine. I then used leaves from my collection to make rubbings. You simply place a leaf underneath the page and using the long side of your crayon you rub over the paper. Can you name your leaves? What plant or tree did they come from? Where were you when you found them? I hope this helps you on your travels, Jo. Ah, thanks, Ella, for my really cool logbook. I've collected loads of things in the woods today. I found a really, really big sycamore leaf and a tiny holly leaf. I even found a really, really small acorn. I'm gonna go and do some rubbings and put them in my logbook right away. I really hope you've all been watching super closely. Aren't there just so many incredible things to marvel at in the natural world? I just want you to use your listening skills one last time because we're about to get into that recap rap. Hope you're ready. I'm about to take you through a world that's natural. This all actually happens but it seems so magical. We've got to look after all the plants and animals. Let's run the blue whale down to the bumblebee. They'll play a key role like they're in a football team. It's great witnessing living things collaborate. These winged insects help flowers to pollinate. Bees go from flower to flower getting nectar. Picking up pollen grains from the stamen. Transporting them to the next flower stigma. Or pistol, that's what we call pollination. Now what the bottom of the pistol of the ovules kept in the ovary a little lock chamber and when the pollen meets the ovules they turn into seeds that's what we call fertilization then the seeds grow into flowers and the process repeats wouldn't you agree that's amazing so next time you see a field full of flowers just pause and marvel at these wonders of creation listen up class for something funky and factual I'm about to take you through a world that's natural this all actually happens but it seems so magical we've got to look after all these plants and animals yeah there's all these plants and animals yeah there's all these plants and animals we've got to look after all these plants and animals cause we're all this planet's inhabitants after all now we're all part of an ecosystem so we can see others nature keeps hidden they all rely on soil climate and water I'll explain what I mean if you keep listening now with these three essential elements I'll start with soil meaning the ground a source of nutrition climate that means the weather and the temperature and water's the liquid we need for existence flora and fauna means plants and animals and they all form part of the food chain there's fresh water flora called algae so I use that as an example to explain flies eat the algae fish eat the flies birds eat the fish when they swoop down from the sky to grasp it in 
the talents But so much more happens So we've got to try our best Not to upset the balance Yeah, that was something funky and factual We just travel through a world that's natural This all actually happens But it seems so magical We've got to look after all these plants and animals Yeah, there's all these plants and animals Yeah, that's all these plants and animals We've got to look after all the plants and animals Cause we're all these planets inhabitants after all Peace.